good morning. Calmerton the car guy here. In my original OG gangster Batman Riddler bad guy shirt, which I'm really not a bad guy, but um, trying out my new spectacles today. I guess you're officially getting old when um, you gotta wear glasses. I'm 49, don't tell anybody, but I've never had to wear glasses before. And you know what? They're pretty darn cool. Because I'm in here looking at this carburetor, as you can see right here, and I can read all the numbers on it. It's freaking amazing. I absolutely love it. Well, it's been a while since I had a uh, episode on Cal Martin Cars. <clears throat> a little bit going on on the home front with the kids and things. We're back full swing and gonna try to get at least maybe three posts a week, depending on what I find. If it's not worth posting, I'm not going to put it on here. It's stuff that uh, you guys don't see here. Repetitive, constant, daily, <clears throat> everyday stuff you already know. I already know. Now, it's not what me and you take for granted, being mechanics or technicians, especially at the dealership. We don't think common sense is common sense to other people. So a lot of times <clears throat> you, you listen to someone on one of these blogs talk and you're like, well, I know that. Well, I know that. Well, I know that too, but I didn't know that till I watched somebody else's blog or somebody had to teach it to me. So what I'm saying is nobody knows it all. It's the access to gaining the information. Right now we're with Austin Null, student from last year. What's up? <laughs> Morning, Austin Null. He's got a Volkswagen. I'm going to flip around here. Enough looking at me. Um... Somehow you're supposed to flip the camera. I was turning around. We got a 1974 Volkswagen Beetle. Um, his brother ordered a carburetor for it. Old one didn't feel like rebuilding it. Uh, I'm sure there's miracle workers out there that could take them and eat them for breakfast, put new parts in them, shine them up, and kick them up, soup them up, make them burn rubbers and ride willies like Herbie. But on this one, uh, common mistake, he bolted it on, um, got all the hoses and everything hooked up, and says, I need to get the carb adjusted. Well, he's just learning, been doing it for a couple years now, and carburetors old school. Most people don't pay attention to carburetors or even talk about carburetors. So that's one thing I want to touch on this morning is carburetors because they're so scary to so many people. Such new technicians that are coming in the field that are in their 20s, uh, 18, 19, even 30. Heck, I was 30 something and I was scared of them until I finally started playing with my RC cars and uh, a couple weed eaters and realized kind of the basic fundamentals of it. And then I kind of just took the rest from there and applied it uh, to the car. One of the things I was telling Austin we have to identify our components first. First thing you got to do, use your Google. Google search, guys. Get on Google. Get on any access to any information you can. I promise you, you're on Mitchell. You're on all data. You'll be two years getting the specs for this Volkswagen faster than you can Google it and hit the image button, and it's there. Uh, trust me, we just did it. So um, one of the things he, he questioned me, and this is a good learning point, is it's not running. I'm like, well, what's the symptoms? What do you mean needs adjusted? Well, we just bought it and we need to adjust it. And I said, well, that's cool. So now what's it doing? Yeah, it's backfiring running like hell. I'm like, well, I got you. I said, what specs are you using? He said, uh, not answering that. I said, I don't, okay. He didn't have none. And that's normal. Most people think a carburetor technically just like any other component you buy, is set up, ready to go, bolt on and fire up. You would think the manufacturer would turn the needles in or the jets in for the low idle and the, and the high, the, the low end and bottom end. You would think that they would set that up for you, but, and some manufacturers do back them out, twist them in and back them out to the right amount of turns to some degree, but there's still some fine tuning. Some manufacturers could care less. They're in it for getting the part out the door, crank it down, 
and move it because they're, they're selling volume, not quality. It all depends on what you pay for the carburetor, and I can't guarantee that everyone's going to be the same. Could have got, got, got some dumbass on Friday that didn't feel like adjusting the carburetor and just threw it in the box. So um, the main thing you want to do is you got to get it to operating temperature. Well, isn't that the funniest thing in the instructions? Gee, money, Christmas. Get it to operating temperature. It's the first, it's the first step, it says. This, this is what I love. Get it to operating temperature until the choke is completely off and then adjust your throttle lever. Now, without having any knowledge of cars whatsoever, the guy reading from his flow chart, quote, flow chart, would sit here and run this thing for days and days and days going through plugs because he would never get the son of a bitch to start and never get it if the needles were completely shut. So you're going to be beating your head against the wall and wondering why you didn't just take the Tylenol. So to make this simple, we have low PSI in this engine. And the reason we don't need a lot of PSI is the carburetor does all the work. Fuel injection is pretty simple. We do it in milliseconds and we do it quickly. We spray it and it evaporates even in a direct injection we're way up psi thousands of psi you know we almost vaporize our, our fuel as soon as soon as we get it in there well you want to go basics a carburetor all it does it has a little bowl right here and in this bowl it stores the fuel and there's a float in it and people you know the common terms are used all the time bowl, 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 bowls floats jets Carburetors choke, electric choke, four barrel, two barrel. You know, we all get her done, got her, got to know our for carburetors. This is a one barrel. You know, it don't matter what it is. Getting the linkage adjusted is the main thing on the big ones. On the small ones, there's not a whole lot to them. So there's not a whole lot you can do wrong. But the first thing you got to do is understand that when this fuel goes in, and I'm not gonna take this off, but when this is, well, I'll take that off. When you're inside there. These two jets right here, this rear air sucks in, and these two jets right here, or these two tubes, they're going to let the fuel mist in. So we're going to take the air cleaner off because he's probably got it flooded since he's tried to start it before. It sat all night, so we're going to try to adjust it. So this right here is your dump. So when you floor it, it unloads everything straight down in the dump valve. What we want to do is try to get it running enough with just enough choke on to allow it to warm itself up and then we can fine tune it. Well, one of the things that happens inside a carburetor is you got a whole bunch of fuel and a whole bunch of air sucking through the intake manifold or through, through the crankcase and you got air sucking. If the pistons are, are rocking, they're wanting it, they're talking, they're pulling, but the fuel's not there. Well, it pulls so much vacuum, it literally will take the bowl and make it look like a mist almost like a smoke machine when you're out at a Halloween party. It just missed the fuel, just a little bit of mist. And that little bit of mist will burn. Well, most of your newer weed eaters, all your weed eater assemblies, don't have adjustments. Uh, they're federal government controlled carburetors that have to go down the road. Uh, it depends on what state you live in and your EPA regulations. So, um, make a long story short, on a single stage car or single adjustment carburetor you got basically the same thing i was telling him you got a low end needle and then you got a top end needle well let's say we go with our bottom end or, or one that only has one needle you think well, what the hell do i do so you turn it all the way lean <clears throat> she takes off real fast turn it off or turn it all the way rich and then she runs like a demon top end because if you back it all the way out you're dumping all your fuel early and you ain't going nowhere. You got to dang on push your little go-kart down the hill before it'll go. It'll do 250 mile an hour, but it sure as heck won't take off. So you adjust it down the other way. Well, then it'll burn the tires off, but it won't do past seven mile an hour. So what you got to do is figure out how to adjust the carburetor on a single to have that happy balance between low RPM and high RPM. The advantage of a carburetor like this that has two is you're going to be able to adjust your low end and your bottom end just a little bit better and give you a little more fine tuning. Specifications, they're probably pretty much the same on any carburetor, but if you look right here, this is screw number two and number one. Now, Austin, what did we get for screw number two? The largest screw was, was like 
two and a half? All right, I need a bigger screwdriver for that one. What was the bottom one? Three, three and a half. Okay, so what we do is we index. We're indexing our carburetor right here. This is our needle. And then we're just going to half. That's one. Half. Two. Half. Three. So we're dead up and down. We need a larger flathead. All right. Now this one... We're going to make sure it's in tight. Well, God darn it is. Yeah, she's tight. All right. Now we're going to back it out. See, we're, we always index where we're at. So we're pretty much right there up and down. So we're going to go one, two. Is that two revolutions? Did you watch me? Yeah. I always double check myself. We'll tighten it back up. Never want to question it. And I wanted to get it seated good too. Alright, so there's a half, one, a half, two, and let's go a half. Alright. We're coming up on our 15 minute window. YouTube will only allow me to have 15 minute videos uh, until I get 100 subscribers. After I get 100 subscribers, then they're gonna let me um, have more than uh, 15 minute videos. So I gotta kinda cut this one short. We're down to about three minutes left. Go ahead and see if this thing will start, Austin. Um, I'm gonna set your choke just pretty good. Let's see what she does. Just with going off basic specs. Come on, cars. All right, hold on. Go ahead. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's kind of cool now today. All right, hold on. Do it one more time. I have turned. Go ahead. All right, hold on. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to do a quarter turn here. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and give it some gas again. I mean, don't give it the gas. Let's start it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's our sweet spot. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Bye. 
fine-tuned. I'm on the 15-minute mark, guys. You got it running. We'll come back. Video number two.